Children are of immeasurable worth to God. Each one is an extraordinary miracle. Today, over 400 million children live in countries where there is war or other violent conflicts. In places such as Israel, Gaza, Ukraine, precious children are being violently robbed of their innocence as a result of war. In war, children suffer terribly. Often forced to flee their homes in search of safety, many remain displaced for extended periods of time. Some are orphaned or separated from parents and caregivers. Children living in war-affected countries live in constant fear, experiencing grave violations of their rights with serious impacts on their mental health. Please pray for the children of the world. Now, our nation of Australia, on the other hand, is rightly regarded as a land of opportunity. We are colloquially referred to as the lucky country. But tragically, though, despite giving lip service to the immense value and worth of every child, we are failing them spectacularly, resulting in our nation having one of the highest rates of childhood mental illness and suicide in the world. A recent report examining the happiness and well-being of children in the world's richest countries ranked Australia 35th out of 38. Over the past decade, the mental health of Australian children has continued to deteriorate until we are now facing epidemic levels of childhood mental illness. The statistics are shocking. One in seven children aged between four and 17 experience a mental health condition in any given year. Psychologists report that the highest increase in their patient numbers is children aged between 18 months and five years. Conditions in this age group include separation anxiety disorder, ADHD, anxiety disorders, and autism. Now, children aged six to 12 also showed a sharp rise in mental illness, including a 36% rise in problematic screen use. The oldest age group, 13 to 18, displayed the highest increase in depression, social anxiety disorders and suicidality or self-harm. Despite our apparent wealth and peace, suicide is so prevalent among young Australians aged 15 to 24 that it ranks as the single leading cause of death. In the first three months of this year, 13 young Victorians aged between 13 and 17 years old, nine boys and four girls, had already killed themselves causing the state's coroner to call on the community to do more to intervene. The deaths happened in diverse circumstances across the state with no clear links. All of this is disturbing, but we need to be disturbed and we need to act decisively. We cannot continue to ignore the fact that we are living in a country where 18-month-old children are presenting to clinics with serious mental health issues. Australia is sleepwalking into social disaster. Half of all adult mental health challenges in Australia emerge before the age of 14. Childhood may be fleeting, but it is a time of critical development. Children are not small adults, they are children, and they will never get a second chance to relive their childhood. But there is no reason why we can't turn this around and once again be a nation that prioritises our children having a positive childhood and future. We serve a God who invented redemption. So what needs to change? Well, for a start, adults must reject the lie aggressively pushed on us by clever, clever and greedy marketers that the pursuit of self-fulfillment should be one's ultimate life goal, particularly when that personal fulfillment comes at the cost of our children's well-being. Tragically, so many have bought this lie and our children are paying a tremendous price. It is not self-fulfillment that brings about a flourishing society, but rather it is self-sacrifice. This is at the very heart of the Christian life. It is a Christian concept and virtue. In Romans, the Apostle Paul wrote that we are to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is true worship. There is no doubt that the erosion of Christian values in our nation, the deconstruction of family and human dignity, the lost understanding that we are created equal in the image of God has brought us to where we now find ourselves. Interestingly, a research study from Harvard reported that children raised in faith-based homes are more likely to be mentally healthy, have lower rates of addiction, and be more resilient to stress. When I was a child, I didn't know the meaning of stress. I was cared for and virtually carefree. But for our kids today, there's plenty to be stressed about. Let me give some examples. Most children spend a large amount of their time at school. Australia has one of the world's highest rates of compulsory instruction time in primary school, yet we continue to slide down in world rankings in education achievement. Certainly one reason for this is that our Australian curriculum is failing our children. 
For reasons I cannot fathom, our modern curriculum is underlaid by ideology, including the support of gender fluidity and diverse sexual orientation, with an emphasis on students exploring their sexual identities in a manner that I believe is exploitation and indoctrination. And what is taught in the classroom is played out in the physical world. Parents at Clifton Springs Primary School are currently being threatened by the Victorian Education Department with criminal action for advocating against the school now forcing boys and girls to share the same bathroom facilities. Let me be very clear. These parents are not objecting to unisex toilets being available. They simply want separate facilities to also be available for boys and girls who do not feel comfortable sharing the toilet space with the opposite sex. The children have legitimate concerns, particularly during the changes and challenges that accompany puberty. Some are not going to the toilet during the day and asking not to go to school at all. We applaud the Federal Shadow Education Minister, Sarah Henderson, who is defending the parents and standing up for the children by calling on the Victorian government to reinstall separate toilet facilities at the school alongside the unisex toilets. Every level of government has a responsibility to take all available measures to ensure all children's rights are respected and protected. The Honourable Sarah Henderson is one who is taking that responsibility seriously. And she's not alone. Senator Alex Antic has um, tabled a bill in the Senate supported by Senators Ralph Babette, Malcolm Roberts and Matt Canavan to prohibit clinical interventions to transition a child's biological sex. Now, also in South Australia, South Australian parliamentarian Frank Pangello is calling for an inquiry into the care of gender dysphoric children. These parliamentarians deserve our support, but they can't do it alone. Helen Keller once said, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. So please join us as we lobby government for the protection of our nation's most precious resource, our children. God bless you.